Welcome once more, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another episode of Ask Oki. Today, we're going to talk about the fit of an Ask Oki classic coat. We're going to start from the top and work our way all the way to the bottom. We're going to start from the color of the coat. We're going to talk about the shoulder. We're going to talk about the armhole. We're going to talk about the chest or the drape in the chest to be specific. We're going to talk about the sleeve head. We're going to talk about the sleeve length. We're going to talk about the waist of the jacket and the overall length of the jacket. We'll also talk about the back drape and how it should fit. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's get into it. Well, let's get into it. So we're gonna start from the top, the collar. How should a collar fit? The most important element of fit in a collar is should hug your, your shirt collar. It should sit firmly on your shirt collar. In other words, when you move around, when you observe, obviously, when you wear a jacket, uh, you move around, you shake hands, uh, you make gestures, and so on and so forth. And the last thing you want is your jacket coming off of your collar. And so, you, you know, if the collar is not fitted very well, you're going to notice a gap. Each time you make an exaggerated movement, you notice a gap and the jacket falls off of your shoulder. That is very bad fit. And there are a number of things that can cause that, including sort of, you know, a poorly caught armhole or collar. So the important thing, one of the most important things, the most important fit elements on a jacket is the collar. It needs to sit. It needs to be locked in. It needs to be locked down on your neck. I mean, it needs to be completely stapled to your shirt collar. That's one. The other thing to look out for in a drape coat, in our Askoki drape coat, is the shoulder. Now, there are different ways to look at the shoulder. There are those who cut the shoulder on the natural shoulder, and which tends to be a bit more of sort of a forward-looking, uh, contemporary Italian or continental look. Uh, sometimes the Neapolitans even sort of take the shoulders all the way in um, to give it sort of more of a casual look. Our cut is slightly different in the sense that it's a drape cut, so we basically extended the shoulders slightly. However, it should still sit flush. It should fall down basically off the edge of your shoulder. In other words, it shouldn't be drooping. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be so wide as to droop off your shoulder but it should also not be too close to your shoulder bone here. So it should fit right here such that when you look at the jacket from the side, it falls straight in a perpendicular line from top to bottom. And that's what we call, that's what we call, at least in our code, we call an extended shoulder. It doesn't have to be too wide, but wide enough that you have a vertical drop from the edge of your shoulder all the way down to the bottom. Again, if you look at my shoulders, you can observe how the sleeves fall in a vertical line without a curve. So my biceps are concealed, you don't see anything, it just falls in a very clean, just a very nice linear look. So that's the shoulders. Next thing we're going to talk about the sleeve head. And here is the sleeve head, right here, and the upper arm. We like some fullness in the top of the sleeves. Again, it goes with the drape cut. It's a full cut, uh, and we basically have to cut the sleeves as well to show uniformity across the coat. So, you know, we like a lot of room in the sleeve head, and then have the sleeve taper all the way down to the cuff. But generally speaking, you know, we have the extended shoulders, and we pair it with a full sleeve head. And we're going to talk about the chest, and you sort of see how this all makes sense as a, as, a, as a triumphant, so to speak. So, sleeve head full, we cut it quite full, such that your biceps are not showing through. Um, it's not too big either, it's not too loose, but it's just loose enough to maintain that fullness and that shape and sort of curved all the way down to your cuff. Now, let's talk about the sleeve length as well. The rule of thumb, of course, is that one must show about a quarter inch of linen, meaning your shirt. So here, as you can see, 
We've cut it such that my shirt stops on my wrist bone and the, uh, the coat stops about a quarter of an inch. Now, your taste might vary. Some like to show a little bit more shirt, some like to show less. But I think uh, this is just about the right length for my taste, you know, for my, uh, for my book. Uh, about a quarter of an inch or thereabout, and it's just sort of elegant. So that's it for the sleeve. Now, let's talk about another really important element of this Askoki coat. What makes it so unique and, you know, what makes it really stand, stand out is the drape, the drape cut. Now, what is the drape in the chest? It is the fullness we've cut into the chest of this coat. We've cut some fullness into it. You can almost see when I move my arms, you can sort of see the cloth fold here. Now, that doesn't mean the coat is too big. It's just cut on purpose that way. It's cut with a full chest. And uh, this, is, uh, this, involves, this is, involves an intricate piece of artwork um, by our tailors to make this, to create this drape in the chest. As you can see, the armhole is still fairly high. It still has a very high armhole and the fit is spot on. However, we've been able to create this beautiful drape in the chest, which gives you this beautiful, beautiful feel, very comfortable, very roomy, without being too large. So that is what you call a drape chest. The chest should be, should be full enough such that your lapels aren't buckling. It's, it's not uncommon that you see a lot of coats out there. The lapels are either bowing out because the chest is too tight. And so that's what happens when you don't cut enough room in the chest, when you don't have enough sufficient room in the chest. What happens is that the lapel starts to pull apart. And then you have this sort of gaping lapel look, or the lapel tend to bow out or bow out. Um, and, and so when you have a full chest, there's sufficient room in the chest, the lapel should lie flat. And I'm a barrel-chested fellow. I'm, I have a very, very broad chest, yet, it's very difficult to tell from this quote that I have a 16-inch drum, meaning sort of I have, uh, you know, the, the, the gap between the, the, my chest and my waist measurement is about 16 inches. So it's very difficult to tell wearing this coat that I'm very, very muscular. And that is the whole idea behind a drape coat, to conceal certain elements of your natural physique. Now, that's the chest fit. Let's move further down to the waist. How should it fit in the waist? Now... As you can observe, looking at this, you know, the jacket has a knit waist. Obviously, it, it's got, you know, it's shaped, it's got a bloom chest, it's got a knit waist, and then the, the skirt flows out from there. The key there is to ensure that you don't overdo it. For instance, we've, we, this is what I call sort of a gentle nip. If you look at the silhouette, if I stand this way, you can look at the camera, you can see the silhouette, just a beautiful shape to it the bloom in the chest, going in, curving into the waist, and then just such an ever so gentle tuck in the waist to give you that beautiful shape without being too aggressive. Again, I'm very athletic. I have a massive drop. And the last thing I want to do is to accentuate that. So whether you're muscularly built or sort of whether you're, whether you're pear-shaped or whether you're sort of built straight, the whole idea of a drape cut, of our drape cut, is to flatter you. So say, for instance, with someone with smaller shoulders, we'll build out the shoulders and still be able to capture that beautiful uh, suppression in the waist. So uh, our waist here, as you can see, we've suppressed it ever so slightly, just a slight suppression in the waist, just to give it that shape. And then the jacket flows out again. So that's the waist. How should it fit? You should be able to move around in your coat. I should be able to tug it like this. When I sit down, in fact, I should be able to sit with my coat button, though you shouldn't, especially with a single-breasted coat. When you sit down, you have to unbutton it. But the point is that you should have enough room that you can fit an arm in the coat without popping a button, as you can see. So you can see that the shape of a coat doesn't necessarily come from cutting it very tight. It comes from the cut of the coat itself. We have this beautiful silhouette, yet we have acres, acres of room in the waist. So that's how your waist should fit. Now, let's talk about the button placement. Your button 
or your, your functional button, the one that actually button should be right on your natural waist. And where is your natural waist? For many, it varies. For some, it's above or below their navel. But for the average person, myself included, my natural waist is right on my navel. That's my belly button. So I can push this button, this middle button, and I'm touching my belly button. It's right there. And as you can see, that is sort of where my trousers start as well. So there is this confluence between my navel, the, the, the waistband of my trousers, and my coat button. That's the way it should be, that uniformity, because this is the fulcrum of your body. You know, when you look at your body physiologically, this is your fulcrum. So this is the middle, this is the fruit, not necessarily the middle of my body, but this is the fulcrum of my body. This is the thinnest part of my body, and that is where the waist should be. So that, that's it for the waist. Now, going further down, let's talk about the length. This is a tricky one, um, because some people like their jackets a bit longer, others like it shorter. Clearly, the Italians or the continental look uh, tends to uh, lean towards a shorter jacket. Uh, whereas the more classic look is longer, uh, like the one I have on. I like longer jackets, and let me explain why. Um, you have to look at the whole silhouette. You, you can't just sort of look at the coat in isolation. You have to look at the whole silhouette, meaning the coat and the trousers. Uh, as coach, okay, trousers are cut very full. And that is our signature. Some like it, some don't. But our as coach, trousers are classic full cut trousers. And the idea is that your coat should pick up your trousers without any interruption. So there should be a continuous line from the top to the bottom when you look at the coat and the trousers. There should be a continuous line. There shouldn't be a break. And what happens is that when you have a short jacket and full cut trousers, it just doesn't pair well. And so based on the number of, you know, the time, the hours and thousands of hours, and years of research we put into this look, we arrived at the conclusion that for a jacket to work with our full cut trousers, it needs to be cut on the longer side. So, you know, longer is gonna vary, it's gonna depend, it's gonna vary from person to person, but for me, we found this to be just about the right length uh, to pair or to marry properly with uh, the pair of Askoki trousers I have on, which is a pair of gray cavalry twill trousers, you know, made out of dog milk cloth. So that's about it for the length. Uh, the, the important thing, obviously, is that, you know, it must cover, it must clear your bum, clearly. That is the rule of thumb. It must clear your bum, but by how much, it now depends. It all depends on the individual, okay? Uh, mine clears my butt more than sufficiently. Again, I explained the reason why I personally tend to go with longer coats uh, specifically when I pair them with our Askoki trousers. Uh, but for you, again, you have to look at your own unique proportions. Uh, you have to look at the type of trousers you wear. Uh, if you're one of our Askoki disciples and you have fully bought into the full cut uh, trouser look, then uh, a longer jacket is essentially is an essential, it's a non secular as they would say. Uh, so that's about it for the length. Now, let us get into the armhole. This is a really important part of the fit of a jacket. I should have actually talked about it much earlier, but I like to leave the best for, the, for last. The armhole is absolutely critical. It is everything, everything. Uh, you can, uh, you, you know, you have so much latitude, it's, you know, elsewhere. Uh, you even have latitude in shoulders if you decide to cut your shoulders a bit even more extend, extended to have sort of that slouchy look, that's fine. But the one thing you can screw up is the armhole. The armhole needs to be high. It needs to be high, not tight, but it needs to be very high. You can see here. And I'll explain why your armhole needs to be high. Your, the, the two things that anchor the jacket to your body that lock it in are the armhole and the collar. These need to be spot on. They are absolutely non-negotiable. You have to nail the armhole, you have to nail the collar because, you know, think about it like a vice. You know, the collar and the armhole are both like a vice. So they basically lock the coat in place. 
which means it doesn't matter how, uh, how much you move, uh, it doesn't matter how exaggerated your movements are, these are the two elements that lock, that make sure that you're locked into the coat. And so, you know, you might prefer a fuller coat uh, or, you know, a very close cut coat. That's, that's a matter of taste. Uh, the two things that you cannot negotiate are the fit in the armhole and the fit of the collar because that is what ensures that the coat is stabilized and it's not moving around when you're moving. So again, the armhole is really, really, really very, very critical. As you can see, I move around. The coat moves, of course, but the moment I bring my hands down, the coat sits back down. That is fit. You know, you don't want the coat dancing all over the place when you move around. You want it to, I mean, obviously, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an inanimate object, so it's going to move when you move. Uh, but when you bring your back, hands back into a natural position, the coat should sit properly. And that is the mark, that is the hallmark of a well-tailored well jacket. The armhole, non-negotiable. It needs to be very high. It needs to be very high. Um, some call it small, or small armhole, I call it a high armhole. So that when you raise your hand, the jacket doesn't move much. When you bring it back, it sits back into position. So that's the armhole. Um, the two things, two uh, remaining items we're going to talk about are uh, the back drape. Now, this is really critical, the back drape. And let me explain why. Similar to the front drape, uh, Askoki coat has been designed with drape in mind. Comfort, let me put it this way. Um, our Askoki coat has been designed with comfort in mind, comfort and elegance. And part of comfort is just making sure you have enough room to move around. So we talked about chest drape. Now we're going to talk about back drape. Now have a look at my back. If you observe very closely, you can see ripples alongside my shoulder blade, running down vertically along down my shoulder blade. You can see ripples of cloth. That is excess cloth that has been cut in there on purpose to ensure that I have room to move around, to ensure that it's comfortable without losing the shape, of course, without losing the shape of the jacket. Having that room, you have to cut in those vertical folds to ensure you have such, and that is what we call back drape. So the, the, the jacket maintains its shape, yet I have plenty of room to move. The jacket is very comfortable. That is what we call back drape, and that is a key element of our Askoki jacket. So the two key things, again, the three key things about our drape card, the chest drape, the back drape, um, and that's actually it. The other things are fairly uniform across all cuts and all designs and philosophies. But as far as you know, our philosophy goes, uh, our dress philosophy or sort of our design philosophy, we emphasize this chest drape and the back drape uh, in other words, we emphasize comfort and elegance. So that's about it. One last thing I want to talk about, the vents. The vents, and this is the line this, this that runs down here. And it relates somewhat to the waist of the coat. So the waist should be cut such that the vents drop vertically. They're not pulling. So, you know, sometimes you see some people... You know, people wear their jackets and the vents are pulling. That means the waist is too tight or the seat is too tight. So the waist and the seat need to be cut such that the vents basically fall in a vertical line. As you can see. Falls very cleanly in a vertical line without any gaping. Just elegant overall. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, that is all we have as far as the fit of a coat goes. Uh, we've gone through a very comprehensive review about the key things to watch out for in the fit of a coat, or more specifically, the key things that to watch out for in the fit of an Askoki classic coat. Uh, and so, that's about it. And uh, thank you once again.
for joining us uh, for this episode. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Do not forget to smash that subscribe button on our YouTube channel uh, on Instagram. Uh, please follow us on Instagram. And also, do not forget to uh, click that button below on our homepage, on, our, on the portal, and join our Slack community uh, where you're going to meet like-minded individuals and we can talk about clothing uh, amongst other things all day long. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.